What does it look like, honey? Cold. <laughs> the water's stiff. So we're picking our boat up in what, just over a month and the water's still frozen. <laughs> yeah, now we're off to the boat fair, uh, hopefully to buy some stuff that's on our charter package and anyway stuff that we need for the boat. Um, yeah. Mm. Elfö, There was more than one. They knocked the station down. <laughs> Elfö. I think not. Elfö In English, it means. All for sea, right? Or something? Yeah. Everything for sea. It must be this one, right? <clears throat> so you might have to release the blue one first, because I think you've got to release this. I think there's a furler inside here that you release. Yeah. You don't pull it, because that takes it in. But this one doesn't do anything. It does. Yeah. Honey. <laughs> I don't think it's... This is the purpose of this. Yeah, yeah, but you just gotta. It's one of these that you release. It's this one, probably. There we go. And then pull this one now. Yeah, but honey, I don't wanna. There you go. That's it. And how do you get it in again? That's what the blue one's for. It's the infurler. <laughs> there you go. So you've got to keep tension on this, right? When you're pulling yeah, it in. Yeah, back tension is good. Yeah. On the alcohol. But that was not the. That was not the. Okay. It was the. It was the. The way it was. Yeah. Going in. It so should it goes go counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, we need to learn this. Yeah. But it's always, with, with these in-mass furling systems, right, it's always best to have the wind slightly to the port side when furling them in and out because they're rolling right, yeah? I, I, would, I would suggest going straight. Straight into straight wind. Into wind yes. Okay, yeah. What happens if you, you're furling in-mast too loose, Yeah. Uh, it doesn't get, get properly stacked here, so it could go, you know, double out okay. yeah, and exactly. lock in itself. Yeah, so and then it will end up locking here and then all yeah. sorts of problems. Yeah, the tension on. Yeah. Another revolution of the sail will come out here. Sure. And then this is in case, you know, you have any problems down here, you can just wind this manually, yes, I guess. Yes, you can. Yeah. And of course, it's not as narrow as here. I yeah. Mean, there's usually some more space. This yeah, yeah, to, up, to so get the winch in, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, no it's problem. just a display, so that's why. Cool. It's good to see it in a mini version actually, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> always, always to keep in mind when, when handling a in-mast furler or a head yeah. sail furler is to have a tension, a back tension all yeah, the time. Yeah, on the sail, just uh, to keep whether it. Whether you take it in or take it out, always have yeah. a back tension because okay. when it comes to the jib furler, you need that in order to stack the line properly yeah. on the drum. Yeah, yeah. If you don't, yeah, because otherwise, let the otherwise wind just it'll blow just. Out the, sail, mm? the line will be loose, loosely stacked, and okay. when you try to take it in, it might just go into itself and lock. Yeah, yeah. So you need to have some back tension all the time. Yeah. Yeah, no. And if you do it properly, Good. you it's just a walk in the park to use it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's just going to take a little bit of practice, I think. Of course, of course. Whatever mm -hmm. you think. Yeah, we're, we're picking a, a Hansa up um, the end of next month, actually, within mass furling, so we just okay. got to learn it very quickly when we get down there. So. Very good. Yeah. Yes, you heard correctly. We've ordered our Hansa with in mass furling. Now, some of you hardcore sailors out there might be cringing right now because of the sail shape and all that kind of stuff. We went with the in mass furling system simply because of the ease of use. I was a bit concerned about performance and the sail shape. But with the introduction of the vertical battens in the sail, this has become less of a problem. And one thing that I thought was a real pain in the backside on the slab reefing system is the sail bag. Trying to unzip and zip that up every time that you want to get the sail in and out is a real hassle. 
At least in my opinion, anyway. Yeah. How big is it? It's the uh, 41. 41? Yeah. Wow. A lot of space. Yeah. It's going to be nice. One 41 footer has a lot of space. <laughs> Can you sail now, honey? Is that the, was that a good enough lesson? Or? No. So we've just been through one of the halls with all the accessories and everything, all the equipment for the boat. And now we are in the hall with all the boat, which is mainly power boats. Yeah. There are a few yachts in here, down at the other end. Yeah. We found that main, mainly Stockholm's messing is about the power boating range, isn't it? It's not really about sailing. There might be one or two sailboats down at the other end, but it's mainly just power boats everywhere. There is. I think there is a few Benetton or Odyssey at the other end. Yeah, we need that engine on our boat, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, yes, I mean... Jesus Christ, it's big. Yeah, well... Every boat needs a 425 horsepower V8. How, how else would you get anywhere without one? Let's have a look. Oh, some champagne in there, yeah. <laughs> so, we've just come and met our friend Henrik who sold us the boat. You know? what are, you, are you breaking everything around here? I'm passing into the toilet. Oh, yeah. So he's on selling other boats now. This is a manufacturer from the Netherlands. Uh, what's the boat called? Rhapsody. Rhapsody? Yeah, okay. Well, that's the brand. Yeah, yeah. But it's nice, you know, I mean... You get a good feeling of how close the water is with the... Just how open the boat is, but... In Stockholm... I can imagine it would be pretty cold unless you're on the best of days. We could have this as the tender, you know, just, just tow it behind our boat. <laughs> <laughs> Customer who is the same as ours. Yeah, I know. Because on a boat like this, you obviously need coffee, so you have your own espresso or yeah. Nespresso machine. Yeah, that was kind of a nice boat. Be perfect for the uh, be perfect for the rivers on Amsterdam, the canals and stuff like that. But. Yeah. So we're also looking at outboard engines for the future. You know, now we've just got a Mercury Six, but. It's gonna do for a few years. Yeah, this is a 9.9, this one. And that's a 25. Looking at the size of the engines, you know, the 15's gonna be the last manageable engine, I think, that you can get off without any lifting gear, get off and on. Even that's gonna be very difficult, to be honest, with the weight. I and mean, what does it weigh? So the 9.9's 41 kilos, 15 is 56. And the 25 is 64 kilos, yeah. That's a lot of weight. But hopefully we're going to have davits on the boat by that point, so it's not going to be that much of a problem. Oh, here's the jet skis as well, 1800cc supercharged thing that I took out in Abu Dhabi at one point. That was fun. But yeah, I think it's most likely going to be the 15 just for the two of us. One day. We'll see. And then Tanya just wants to go with the V8 350 horsepower things, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so here, just looking at dinghies as well. Later on, uh, in a few years, we'll probably go for something like this without the uh, console and everything, without the steering wheel and everything like that, just a bare boat. I mean, looking at Highfield, it seems to be the new... Uh, the new tough dinghy. I mean, these are made out of PVC, but I, I'd probably go for Hyperlon, to be honest. But but then again, you know, if we're sailing around the world, it's going to be it's going to be the car. Yes. Like it's this thing that you use every day to get yeah. to and from the boat. You know, it needs to be good. I think the so. size is good. Yeah, the size is good. Probably fits a boat with some good davits on the back or something. And I was also asking as well, like, if we're doing an ocean passage or something, um, we'd probably let down the tubes and store it, try and store it on deck or something. I had an Avon 310 before, and this was a this was a good size with a 15 on the back, but with a 20 on the back, it's going to be great. No, it's optional extras, the wheels, so you can drag it up a beach, which is super convenient to be honest. It's a Halberg Rassi 57. That's a big one. It's also probably bloody expensive as well. 
And a lot of boats now, they seem to be, along with our boat also, they're going with the drop-down bow thruster there. And let's see how that goes maintenance-wise later on. There seems to be a few sailing boats here at the show this year. Nayad as well. I thought they were out of business actually. Yeah. I'm not sure whether you can get a dinghy in here though. But I'm not sure how it would go in or it goes in sideways or what. It's not really made for a dinghy, it's just a playroom I think. Jesus Christ, look at this. Some solar panels on the top there. It's already rigged for some long distance sailing, this one. I mean, you can tell that this is a real hand built boat. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. Yeah, you can't really get anywhere, so I'm just waiting. <laughs> it's a guest. I guess double bed or... Forward double berth. I guess this isn't the owner's berth, it's another guest room, but... Not sure what the back here... Uh, the stern bedroom looks like. It's not that much finish when you start opening things. No, but it's better than... Better than the production boats, I think, but you pay for it. You found in here the bathroom. Separate shower. Nice. That's what I like about these. You've got an engine room there as well. And you've got an unsweet head. This is the look at the size of this. Like this is. <laughs> look, look the TV. Yeah, TV there as well. Then you have the ensuite uh, head. That's quite cool. But I don't know how they really... Oh, there must be... Yeah. It's intended to have some kind of... Because otherwise you can end up with a lot of water in there. But a lot of water in what? In here. Obviously, when you shower. Oh, when you shower, yeah. So, there must be... Yeah, there's something going on. Mm. It's a good idea to have the washing machine in here, though. Yeah. They put the mirrors in all of the heads in the, in the ceiling. Mirrors in the ceiling. <laughs> That's got yeah. something weird, right? No, but it gives you it gives you a sense of more space. Yeah, maybe. But it's like this area. I mean, I I. There's just, I mean, it's nice to have the space, but, but yeah. But if you look but at it's it, it's a bit wasted there. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit too much. Yeah. But I think the boat's big enough just to have that space, just for spaceness. I don't know. So, yeah, it is. <laughs> This is my favorite place on the boat. Look Would at this. Would you be able to fit a compressor and a generator in here as well? Yeah, this is already a generator, this one. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Generator, the engine, main engine, 180 okay. horsepower. Yeah. You get your water makers in here as well. It's probably even got one. It's an inverter there. Or a charger, rather. Could be both. Filters. Yeah. Not too much space around the outside of the engine to get to everything though, but there must be access panels. Fuel filters. Yeah, everything's nice and easy to get to though. Look at, look at this, honey. There's a proper nav table here. I like this. The only thing is though that in a lot of boats now, where you've got the nav table, you can um, just sit here and see outside in the windows as well, especially in the catamarans and things like that. You can just sit at the nav table and see outside as well, like when you... Well, you can't in hours. You can't in hours, but in a lot of the newer designs now, you, the, 
the designs where you sit in higher up in the boat. I think it's mostly on catamarans, to be honest. Yeah, another TV there, popping out. Everything seems a little old school in the Haldberg Rassies, but everything's super well built. Well, you can just tell by the way everything feels and how it sounds when you open and close things. And so as you know we're chartering the boat. The charter company gave us a massive list of all the things that we need to have on the boat for people that are chartering the boat and things that we need for ourselves as well. So here we're doing a little bit of bartering with various companies to get the right deals for us. Especially as we're buying a lot of equipment all at the same time. I'd just like to give a little shout out to cpax.se who are super helpful in finding us all the right safety equipment for the crossing from Germany to Sweden. So what did we get, honey? We've got some ropes. Uh, and I got boots. Finally. Boots. Finally, I found some boots. Ropes. Ropes. Close packs. A load of safety stuff. <laughs> and we ordered a lot of stuff. What uh, type of flares do we get? Smoke flares. Oh, smoke, smoke signals. Red flares. Nine life jackets. Lights for the life jackets. What else did we order? I don't know. Uh, stuff. Yeah. We got a, an AIS transmitter yes, as well. That's right. We what else did we get? Yeah. Loads well. of stuff. Yeah. Cool. Pretty good. Mission success. Bye bye for another year. <laughs> Out for one or all for sea. <laughs> Let's go get some food. <laughs>